Hello everybody, Peter of England. Today's video concerns everybody in the world. It concerns everyone who is subject to taxation by any um, established agency, whether that's the Finanzamt in Germany, whether that's the Trésor Public in France, whether that is uh, the IRS in the United States or HMRC in the United Kingdom all Commonwealth countries, everyone in the world is subject to taxation. It has been said, in fact, that there are only two things certain in life, that is death and taxes. And for the longest period of time, that has always been the truth. So, my main drive, my main contextual, ideological, constitutional argument today concerns a rebuttal by the uh, HMRC, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs as it's called, in the United Kingdom in 2019, I think following a uh, economic impact payment voucher that we had tendered, or someone had tendered on our authority, and what was actually stated there, and it can be looked up, uh, and I would suggest and encourage everyone watching this video to do so, they actually said, that a birth certificate or national insurance number could not be used to pay off taxes or obligations generally. They refuted it also on the basis that, as they were not party to this so-called contract, they had got no, uh, there was no legal obligation or any other ideological obligation for them to interest themselves in the, um, the tender of payment. So what I'd like to do today is to address and ask everybody out there, um, not only those people in the judiciary, not only those people operating in a legal capacity uh, in, the, uh, in these uh, various branches of, of, of law and enforcement, but uh, also just to you, the general public, um, to address this point. The point simply put is, for you to ask the taxation authority in your relevant country, is there a relationship between you and me as a taxpayer? And if there is not a relationship, then why isn't there? And if there is no relationship, then I can't possibly have any obligation to, to pay you. However, if there is an obligation, is it part of a social contract? Is it a social contract between the taxpayer and the government or that authority that is an implied social contract between if me and you, and if I make the payment, you then protect me or offer me services uh, for, uh, for the good of all, for the good within society? And why this is very important that these questions get asked is we need to paint, for example, and I'll just keep using this, the IRS or HMRC as the two examples, we need to paint them into a corner because as far as I'm aware, I don't know anybody that's ever challenged them on this pretext. And that pretext is, is there not a trust in operation between me, the beneficiary, and you, the trustee for the trust property? And if that is the case, then this relationship means that my electricity bills, my uh, general utilities, even my shopping are all payable by you, the trustee. So let's have a look and see what they could contend as being a non-relationship. There is no relationship at all. But let's look at the, the four headings or the four tenets of what constitutes a trust a trust between um, you or anyone creating the trust and the trustee receiving trust property. So the main headings are, one, there must be a trustee who legally owns the property. That's actually the legal title, but holds on behalf of a beneficiary. So is that not the very essence of what's occurring with HMRC and the IRS? Are they not taking financially identifiable assets from you and holding them on behalf of you and others, the beneficiaries? Second heading, there must be property. So something that is tangible, 
something like stocks or shares or money or bank accounts or uh, something that in effect has a value. It could be land and that is also quite discernible from, from um, or, let's say, chattels, chattel property. So if that is the case, they're taking money from you in the form of promissory notes, then again, we satisfy the second head very easily. The third, there must be a purpose uh, and a group of definable beneficiaries who can ultimately become owners or possessors of that property. Is that not exactly the case for the, the, uh, the ideological aspect and the, the governmental aspect of setting up the financial uh, um, taxation authorities anyway? They're taking taxes from you to pay for the benefit of society generally. And you, as an individual taxpayer, are part of that identifiable group of beneficiaries, which is also called the citizenry the subjects, or the country at large. Finally, the fourth one, the trustee must deal with the property for the benefit of the beneficiaries. Isn't that the case with all the road building, with all the construction of uh, uh, civil, uh, civil architecture, uh, the street lighting, utilities for water, for electricity, for, the, for gas supplies, in fact, the whole infrastructure of society from uh, emptying the dustbins through to the protecting of you uh, as a national by the, the military powers that get funded by taxpayers' money, that is also part of that trustee beneficiary arrangement. So on those headings alone, I would say, ladies and gentlemen, we have a trust. And if we have a trust or a trust absolute, um, what that means is the beneficiaries can collectively come together to instruct the trustees in how to pay or disperse that money. So that is a, a very, very conclusive um, uh, aspect and tenet of, of an absolute trust. And what I would begin to do is to start writing to your relevant taxation authority put him on the spot and say, what is the relationship between us? And if there is one, is it not that of a trust? And if it is not a trust, please deny or rebut these headings. Now, there is also different aspects within this, this trust hierarchy. Um, above all, there must be a settlor and a grantor of the trust. Now, the settlor, uh, the one who settles the trust or creates it, can also be a beneficiary, but he cannot be the sole beneficiary. Again, usually the settler can only be um, a beneficiary um, in, in, as long as he's not the sole beneficiary. And the settler can also be um, in charge of the trust up until the moment that he is deceased or dies. From that point, then the trust actually takes on a, a completely different format. Now, settlers can name themselves sole trustee and beneficiary while they are alive, so they can alter the aspects of the trust and control it. The original settlers of this trust you can look at as your ancestors. A current settler of the trust is, is you. Um, and also what you can do is you can look at it like this. You could have settled the trust on behalf of your neighbor or fellow citizen and taxpayer, and he can have done the same for you. So there can be no denial or evasion by the courts or the judiciary or any legally minded um, gymnastics that, in effect, what they're doing is, ah, you can't possibly be a beneficiary if you're actually saying that you are a settler or grantor of the trust in the first place. You follow that? So that's really what you are looking to say. Well, if they maintain that as an argument, you can say, well, I have created that on behalf of my neighbor, and my neighbor has cross-fertilized it for my benefit too. There are also things called protectors, protectors of trusts. A protector is someone who usually oversees the operation and the workings of the trustees uh, to ensure that they're not... Uh, doing anything untoward, paying themselves, misappropriating funds within the trust, or paying uh, beneficiaries who are not entitled to the payment. 
So the main three in what's called the certainties, uh, certainty of intention, certainty of subject matter, and the certainty of objects. We have all those in place, and so what I would suggest uh, to you is, uh, if you're wanting more clarification, get in touch with, with us um, through particularly WeAreBank or admin1 at freemanlegalservices.com, which will be in the link below. Um, circulate this, and we are preparing this as a part of a, a class action or group action, not per se in a classical way, uh, but what we're going to do is start helping you uh, in this time of, um, of stagflation or increased levels of inflation and inability to pay bills and uh, debt obligations to begin to take on your own power because everything has been challenged, everything has been changed. The nature of man and woman, the fact that... Um, Gender dysphoria is, is recognized in four-year-olds or five-year-olds. Um, what you can say on social media, what you can't say on social media. It's easier to, to um, smuggle 200 immigrants into the country now than it is to get 200 cigarettes through customs. Everything has been changed, but not to your benefit or your advantage. So with that in mind, with all the reset desires of people like Klaus Schwab and his family, with all the changes to the way you can burn gas or burn coal, or you have to have a, an electric car, you can't use diesel or gas oil in your car, or there's restrictions on entering into cities or London's 15-minute cities or towns being created. With all that, it is being bombarded and blasted at you on a snowstorm daily basis. Why can we, therefore, not address these facts and say, hang on a minute, you want changes like this, we want changes like that. And from that point forward, we challenge them with arguments using their own legal established trust law instruments to prove that there is a trust. And above all else, what is therefore the relationship between the ordinary citizen, the man on the street, and those who take from him? Not only take from him, but force him to give by coercion, threats, bullying, harassment, enforcement, bailiff, shaming. What more do you need? So please circulate the video, hit the notification and like button, and that's Peter of England saying thank you for watching.